Hey guys, just before we start today's video, just a quick reminder that tonight at 11.59 Pacific Standard Time is the cutoff for my founding members offer for fromthefield.farm and we'll also be closing the registration in general there as well. Um, we've got three videos up there so far, actually way more than three videos, but three weeks of videos up there. The first one was a seven part series that's well over an hour long, full tour of the new Steadfast Farm. The second video I did was a little over an hour on farm design, so looking at a bunch of different farms that I had really good drone shots of and just talking about why the farms were laid out a certain way and, and uh, things to consider like geographical environmental considerations and how I might design them differently if I were to uh, restructure those farms. And then today I just uploaded two videos, one over an hour or an hour long talking about crop planning basics, just kind of going through the, the, the basic fundamentals of crop planning. And then I uploaded another 15 minute video of uh, Eric at Steadfast Farm showing his crop plan and how it works on his farm and, and the software and stuff that he uses to do that. And just another quick reminder, we still have some tickets for the Steadfast Farm workshop, five days, February 25th. I will leave a link to fromthefield.farm and a link to the workshop at Steadfast Farm. This video today is looking at the germination chamber that they're using at Steadfast. And this is actually a small segment of the greater interview that we did at fromthefield.farm from Steadfast Farm. So hope to see some of you guys in here. Remember the cutoff is tonight. All right, enjoy the video. So this is something that more growers need to know about. This is a germination chamber. And I find if you're in a really hot climate or in a really cold climate, this is a game changer for getting consistent germination with your crops. Yeah. So And also speeding up the, the time in which things do germinate. Yeah, like sometimes you can germinate things in two days. Yeah, yeah, brassicas if we were to put in here 12 hours, but yeah, for our lettuce, you know, two to three days even is pretty. So this is basically just a repurposed home refrigerator. This is a freezer. A free, okay. We use a freezer because it has better insulation. Okay. So we don't, but yeah, it was a, a freezer. Um, in order to make, this is a pretty large model in order to make it so the paper pot trays fit well. We ended up cutting off the door, like little shelves uh, in here, uh, uh, uh. and we put a piece of the, like the the plastic board in there and sealed that up. Um, and then we just had a local fabricator build this rack that system rack, for okay. us, yeah. so we can maximize. We took out the shelves that it comes with, and uh, so we can fit like 24 trays in here um, at any at any one time. And so yeah, we just. We added a temperature controller that can control both cold and heat, and then a humidity controller. And we just have this humidifier in the bottom that, you know, creates vapor and that, and then like a fog, a fogger in that, and that will keep our humidity. So we try to run it right at like 77 degrees and about 90% humidity. And um, just, ch you've got to check it often because there's no lights in there. There's, um, so that's creating the humidity, but you just have to watch. So as soon as they start popping, got to get them out of there. Otherwise, they're going to stretch and get yeah, leggy. Absolutely. Yeah. So you really got to have your timing down yep. when you do this. So we'll put, use the outside of the, of the freezer to write, you know, what goes in there and dates and that too. And then we can set alarms for ourselves. Based, we've kind of set baselines like it takes about this much time for, uh -huh. and it's pretty consistent because we've controlled the environment. So, yeah. but simple, but yeah, especially for us, uh, you know, in the, the warm months going into fall, let's say in September, and it's still 100 degrees at times to be able to germinate our fall crops in here and get, you know, otherwise we'd be fighting it. You know, we used to have yeah. to put all of our lettuce flats in the walk-in cooler for 48 hours, oh. which worked well, but this is just so much easier. We can just seed them, toss them in there, and a couple days later, they're going in the greenhouse. And this is enough space for you with everything? Because I mean, I guess they're only in there for a couple of days, right? So it's not like you're gonna, you, you need to have a hundred flats in there at once, you'd kind of stage them, right? We stage them, we're still kind of at capacity. It'd be nice to have a, a little bit more space, but um, we could also make tweaks to our planting schedule so that, you know, some days are, are fuller. Like when we do lettuce, you know, we're doing, you know, 20 plus trays at a time. So we're gonna fill that just with lettuce. So we can't do anything else and things like that. So it's all about, you know, planning, but yeah, it's. 
for this size operation, this is where I can pack. How many, so how many flats can fit in here at once? Uh, I think it's 24. Down here we have like, it's a little, sh not as deep. And so we can't go side by side with the paper pot. We could, we can go side by side with just standard cell flats just because of the depth. Um, but, or we just do a single paper pot sideways and on those ones. Oh, okay. But just for those last three, three levels in there. Um, so yeah, it's still, and it, you know, we measure it. And so it's, it's when you put those trays in there, um, let's see, you know, it's, it's a tight fit. It's a really tight fit with the paper pot. Um, especially lengthwise yeah but we wanted to put there's enough height in there if we were doing like tomatoes and like 50 uh cell you know plug trays and that we could still have enough room for those to fit in there but down here we just would turn those sideways right like that right and so super i mean really simple but it's a you know, it's just taking something and kind of repurposing it and adding yeah. a little bit of control over, you know, humidity, humidity and temperature. And we could add like a, a heater in here also if we need to keep it from getting too cold, which we don't typically have to worry about. No. But we have the flexibility with the, the controller that we can add that if need be. Yeah. So what is what do one of these typically cost to set up? Like a few hundred bucks? It depends on what, you know, what you spend on the unit. I mean the the fogger is probably only i think thirty dollars and then the, the humidity controller is probably another 30 and the temperature controls around the same so let's say a hundred dollars in that stuff um, and then depending on what you do with the racking system i think i spent paid a fabricator about 150 dollars it was pretty tedious work for them to go yeah. through and weld that all up yeah. based on my drawing um, and then whatever you could find you know oftentimes you can find a, a used um, you know, freezer or that. We ended up going with a new one only because uh, we had a specific model in mind because we wanted to maximize it. So this, uh, right. as far as the cubic capacity is, I, I can't remember what it is, but it's as big as they come. You know, it's, you know, six, over six feet tall and, yeah. and that. So it was worth it to us to get exactly what we needed because we just didn't want to worry too much about it. But, you know, you probably could pick up a, a used uh, upright freezer for a hundred bucks and then and where does the fogger come from like what is that thing they use them for i think sometimes in hydroponics uh like some indoor growing stuff or you can use it it's like for a pond and okay and so that's like, where you would find it or, is those places yeah even like some reptile type uh and so you can get them on amazon i ended up finding this from like a specialty company that that's all they do just from talk actually it was a, a mushroom grower that i talked to uses them in their mushroom boxes okay. the humidity and so um so yeah this one and they come in different sizes based on how many like little discs that are making the fog uh, but this one's plenty sufficient for what we do and that water lasts a really long really time. long time so yeah. um and it has an auto yeah it just shuts off when it gets dry so very cool yeah